Hey everyone. Hope everyone's doing well today. We have about uh, two minutes until the presentation begins. So we'll be getting started in about two minutes here. For those of you who are just now joining, we're getting started here in about two minutes. All right, good morning, everyone. It is 10.30 my time, so it's when we said we get started, so we can jump into this, I believe. Uh, so yeah, good morning from Boston. I hope everyone is doing well today. Uh, it's pretty cold out this morning, but you know, luckily just had to bump up the heat a little bit and warm up, but we're doing good. Uh, but yeah, so I hope you all are doing well this morning, uh, but what we're here for today is to talk about uh, what's coming and what's in store uh, for 2021 from Grandstream Networks. We have a lot of really exciting products to cover, a lot of great solutions that will be coming out pretty soon here uh, that we're definitely really excited about. Uh, I'm also joined by my colleague, Abdel, uh, who's going to be pretty much handling any Q&A questions uh, that are coming in. So, you know, be sure if you guys have any questions as we're going, uh, there is a little Q&A option uh, you know, if you're joined via IP video talk at the bottom right of your screen. So if you have any questions to start the presentation, please go ahead and be sure to ask them there. Uh, feel free, you know, just to use the chat to brainstorm and network and you know, talk with all your fellow IT installers, resellers, etc. cetera. Uh, but for those who do not know me, uh, my name is Brian Bandmeter. I'm a Grandstream Marketing Manager. Uh, and typically, I'm either you, me or myself excuse me, me or Phil that are giving these presentations. Uh, if you have any questions after the presentation, I will be sending a follow-up email that will contain these slides uh, as well as a recording of the presentation. So feel free to respond to it there. Uh, and if you happen to be watching the recording of this presentation right now, feel free to just leave any comments, uh, excuse me, any questions that you have in the comments. Uh, but yeah, with no further ado, let's go ahead and get started. We have about, I think, about 25, 30 minutes here of presentation. Don't really want to go too far over for you. Uh, but anyway, what's in store for 2021 Grand Stream? We have a lot of great solutions coming in that we're pretty excited about, especially after uh, the madness that has been 2020 uh, as things start to return to some semblance uh, of normalcy. I think it's always good, though, just to kind of look at our mission, especially when we are going into the new year. 
Uh, you know, what do we really believe in? What's our goals? You know, what does Grandstream aim to achieve? I mean, we believe in connecting the world. Obviously, first and foremost, that's our, that's our main motto. Uh, but the main thing is we believe every business, large or small, should have the tools to communicate from anywhere on any device they're using. Communication is key to the way that we function. I'm sure you all know, too, as installers, as IT resellers, uh, communication collaboration specialists, uh, the way businesses can talk together, the way they communicate with their clients, uh, the way colleagues can work together, collaborate, it's a make or break. Right? And we design all of our products uh, that make this belief reality. Uh, that's always our goal. All right. So our three major pillars uh, for 2021, I would say, and it's definitely something that was pretty big in 2020. Uh, the first one, of course, is our unified communication ecosystem solutions. This is a bread and butter for Grandstream, something you all are very familiar with, our UCM ecosystem, the UCM 6300 series, which we just released, our IP phones, et cetera, all of our IP endpoints that help create this completely unified ecosystem of both on-site and remote workers. Definitely a very big thing uh, at the end of 2020 and a very big thing that we'll be focusing on as we go into 2021. Uh, meeting and personal collaboration devices. Uh, this is definitely a segment that we sort of started working our way into as the pandemic hit in 2020. Uh, it was definitely something that we were planning to look into as well, but obviously with the COVID-19 pandemic, it was a big solution uh, that we sort of crashed within our engineering uh, teams and focused to get out the door as quickly as possible. All right, and then of course our networking solution. Uh, Grandstream's GWN networking devices uh, have really been taking off throughout 2020 and before. Uh, we are seeing a year after year success uh, within the Wi-Fi networking space and it's a really natural addition to VoIP as well. And you know we have some pretty exciting things that are coming and on the way here with 2021. Uh, that sort of helps enhance that VoIP and Wi-Fi integration. All right, well, let's go ahead and jump into our first product, or products, I should say, uh, to start kind of looking forward to, to open up. Uh, this would be the GRP2624 and the GRP2634 uh, IP phones. Expected to be hitting the market in 2021, of course. Uh, but these are two new GRP2600 series IP phones, uh, which are these ideal mid-range devices. So we really want to make sure that with these devices, we are adding something to our GRP2600 portfolio that helps sort of fill that niche of a perfect balance between price point and advanced telephony features. I mean, you may have noticed uh, pretty recently, actually, I think it was what on Tuesday, uh, we you know just released our essential IP phone series within the 2600 series, uh, devices that are all about uh, affordability and efficiency, IP endpoints. And this helps sort of bridge that divide in our current portfolio of offering a very powerful uh, mid-range device. Excuse me, two very powerful mid-range devices. So just to kind of look at some of the technical specs with this device, with these devices, uh, eight lines and four SIP accounts, you know, much like our 2130 uh, and 2135. Uh, it has those advanced features that you would expect, the noise shield technology, uh, HD audio, integrated Bluetooth, Wi-Fi capabilities for Wi-Fi, uh, voice over Wi-Fi deployments, and of course, five-way conferences. Definitely wanted to deliver a device excuse me, two devices that really push call handling features within, you know, mid-range call volumes. Uh, both of them have swappable faceplates uh, for customized logos. Definitely something that is the same across pretty much every single device within our 2600 series. And the GRP2624, that's the one at the top there, that's compatible with up to four GBX20 extension modules. 
So this device can have up to four of those extension modules uh, added on. Very great deployment option uh, for our receptionists uh, or for um, you know any extreme sort of call handling individual that needs access to many, many, many busy LAMP fields. Um, multi-purpose keys as well to transfer calls throughout an entire organization. All right. And then the GRP2634, this device actually has eight multi-purpose BLF keys built onto the device, which you can see in the uh, lower right here. Uh, definitely an ideal solution for those individuals who are pretty consistently um, dealing with higher volume calls uh, and need access to a few key quick contacts uh, throughout their work day. All right, next device to cover the GUV3105 uh, HD webcam. So this is expanding our personal collaboration devices. Uh, like I said earlier, this is definitely a big uh, leg of our portfolio that we want to focus on, that we're seeing a lot of success and a lot of excitement around. Uh, the GUV3105 uh, helps sort of expand into that a little bit more. It's a mid-range webcam uh, compared to our other device, and it delivers a higher quality video and audio experience uh, by supporting a few more kind of advanced collaboration features. Uh, well, which features exactly am I covering on, or excuse me, talking about? So if we compare it to our current personal collaboration device, our current webcam, the GUV31000, uh, the GUV31 uh, has 1080p resolution, 38 FPS, supports the H.264 video codec, has two mic and one meter pickup. If we look at the GUV31005, same thing with the 1080p resolution, 30 FPS, uh, but it actually supports the H.265 codec. Uh, for those who may not be too familiar, what's the big difference between the two? Uh, H.265 uh, allows for much more efficiency uh, when it comes to processing an HD connection, especially with you know, live streams. Makes it a lot easier um, to be able to process that sort of high definition video uh, and takes a lot less bandwidth. Uh, it has two mic with a two meter pickup range, so we sort of up the pickup range with this device just to allow, allow a little bit more you know, flexibility with the way people are deploying it and how they want to set it up uh, within their own personal work environment. And it also supports a series of other sort of advanced features, acoustic echo cancellation, background noise cancellation, along with the privacy shutter as well. All right, kind of still working within this personal collaboration um, trend here, the GUV3050 uh, Bluetooth headset. Uh, expected action in Q1 uh, of 2020. Uh, this sort of fills that niche, um, that sort of hole we have within our Bluetooth, or excuse me, within our headset offering, uh, which is, of course, wireless. Uh, this device also has a USB uh, dongle as well, so it is possible to connect this device uh, with the USB dongle uh, for you know devices that may not support Bluetooth you can make sure they can as long as the, you know, the device itself can support that sort of capability through the, its USB port. So looking at some of the technical specs, you know, I definitely want to highlight the dongle. This is definitely something that people have been asking for for a while, just to give Bluetooth capabilities to phones or IP endpoints that may not just have it. But it also supports up to a 12-hour uh, talk time, single charge. Uh, that's a very big deal. Uh, it's very common, you, you know, especially with these kind of devices, you want something that's comfortable, it's wireless, sits easy on the head. Uh, you know, it doesn't wear down the ears. It's always a very important thing. Uh, but very importantly as well, it can support a very extended long workday. You may not always have that opportunity to plug your headset back in to charge it. I mean, heck, sometimes uh, we don't even <laughs> remember to do that. I know I'm guilty of that, especially with my phone. <laughs> so uh, definitely supporting that extended talk time, uh, you know, helps the device do more on a single charge. Uh, also has a unidirectional microphone arm, 
So whether you like having your microphone on your right side or on the left side, um, you can definitely support that. Very easy to adjust it just by flipping it to the other side. It also has that ideal wireless comfort, um, you know, with desktop collaboration uh, in utilizing IP phones in mind. Definitely want to have a device here that kind of supports both that, you know, customization a little bit, uh, as well as having something that's comfortable to wear. All right, this is something that I know a lot of people are excited about um, within our GWN series, but coming up as well as the GWN uh, 7660, uh, a Wi-Fi 6 access point. I know this is something people have been asking about for a long time. So yes, here it comes, Wi-Fi 6. Um, but this is a high efficiency access point. Uh, you know, the 7660, we really want to aim to deliver quick connection speeds. Uh, to medium sort of Wi-Fi demanding spaces, so such as offices, commercial locations, um, certain kind of retail outlets as well. Think your coffee shops, cafes, uh, et cetera, right? Uh, but it also helps enhance Grandstream's Wi-Fi voice deployment solutions as well because it runs on Wi-Fi 6, which I'm going to cover this in just a moment. Uh, but let's just look at the technical specs real quick. Uh, 1.77 gigabits per second aggregate wireless throughput. Uh, it's a 2 by 2 Mumimo uh, with, of course, that DLUL OFDMA technology that's native to Wi-Fi 6. Uh, we will be coming out, just because <laughs> this has come up before, we will be coming up out with a 4x4 port, excuse me, a 4x4 Mumimo as well next, a little bit further down the line. All right, but this supports up to 256 concurrent Wi-Fi clients up to 175 meter coverage range and an ideal solution. And of course, it still has that advanced QoS to ensure the real-time performance of, this, of other devices, so being able to prioritize connections. So Wi-Fi 6 in the GWN series. Um, you know, some may ask, what's the big deal? What's the huge advantages here that we're talking about? Um, you know, so it's good to note all future w GWN Wi-Fi access points, they will utilize Wi-Fi 6 uh, with the ULDL OFDMA. So what's the big deal about that? Um, so, you know, Wi-Fi 6 essentially can divide large spectrum bandwidth into several smaller resource units. Uh, so it makes it a lot easier to sort of process data, the bandwidth that's coming in and out, being processed to hundreds of different devices at any one time. It's, of course, very important. Uh, but definitely a big deal of this as well is that it can better prioritize and organize uh, real-time applications. Uh, Wi-Fi 6 is way better uh, at prioritizing uh, active or active, excuse me, applications and sort of dictating uh, which one needs more of a stable connection, more of an upload, download, uh, to be able to maintain um, sort of a quality connection. It's also one of the first kind of uh, Wi-Fi versions where Wi-Fi voice definitely is a big deal. It's a, it's a big focus of the device, uh, excuse me, of the version. Uh, it's able to better prioritize and focus on voice over IP data, uh, which is a big deal for those who are deploying those truly kind of wireless uh, Wi-Fi voice communication solutions. Okay, so like I was saying though, all future GWN access points will run on Wi-Fi wi 6 technology. Wi-Fi 6 technology really increases that Wi-Fi voice effectiveness. And we will, you know, and this is subject to change, but it, it, as we're looking now, we will most likely continue the trend of developing long range versions of our access points after releasing just the normal AP version of it. You know, so you, you probably will see GWN 7660 LR coming down the line as well. But pretty exciting stuff coming up for 2021 and our Wi-Fi solutions. All right, surveillance. Uh, you, you all may have seen that we recently kind of refreshed our IP surveillance offering and just sort of released uh, our more you know, recent new GSC uh, surveillance cameras. We're doing the same thing by build, bringing in an adjustable focal lens 
uh, an improved weatherproof case version of these devices. Really exciting thing about these as well, the focal lens tuning can be done completely electronically. So this really provides a plug and play solution, does not require every single time you want to adjust the focal length of these devices, getting up on a ladder or getting up and accessing the IP surveillance, doing it manually. This can be done completely from the um, graphical user interface of the device. All right, looking at some of the technical specs here. Uh, we have weatherproof infrared wall and ceiling mount cameras. It goes from 2.8 to 12 millimeter very focal lens. Uh, so we can have a very wide angle look at this uh, or a narrow version as well. And like I said, this can be completely adjusted electronically. It does have that same motion detection and infrared capabilities that you'd expect out of our surveillance devices and IP67 weatherproof capabilities. So just looking at the IP67 weatherproofing, uh, but this, this sort of enables these particular devices to be deployed in more strenuous areas. So this is either your sort of outdoor deployments that see high levels of rainfall uh, or indoor deployments of high humidity. So just sort of mentioning before we move on that variable focus lens, you know, you can definitely adjust this device to have that sort of 2.8 millimeter wide angle all the way to the 12 arrow angle. Um, you know, primary benefit of this is being able to take the device and either focus it over a very wide uh, area of surveillance, sort of overview shots, you know, as well as then narrowing it down to more close up and viewing more narrow fields. Uh, with more detail you know so for our example here that I'm providing we have a standard uh, deployment within a retail space within a mall 2.8 millimeter wide angle can see uh, many different things happening across the sort of general area of the deployment and the 12 millimeter uh, adjustment maybe if you want to have a camera that's dedicated towards seeing the escalators Okay. All right. The GVC 3220 HD multimedia conferencing device uh, system. Excuse me. Uh, this is expected actually in Q1 of 2021. So you can actually see this coming out pretty soon. Uh, very excited about this. So uh, just to say this right off the bat, because I know people are probably already thinking it. Yes, this does run on Android 9.0, uh, which is definitely fantastic. Uh, really good thing about our device here. Uh, and it does include 4K Ultra HD video uh, and local 5-way 1080p uh, video conferences. Uh, definitely a fantastic device uh, to have within our, um, within our video conferencing portfolio. Uh, really powerful and ideal for your larger boardrooms, conference rooms, classrooms, etc. Right, uh, but it does support Android 9.0, like I was saying. Uh, it has support for SIP uh, or any H323 video conferencing platform. So, you know, for example, this does include uh, GrandStream's IP video talk. And it has integrated dual band Wi Fi. Uh, and it also supports Wi Fi multimedia sharing on the device, too, which is pretty good. So, there isn't so much so uh, that need for the sort of plug in, share your presentation, etc. cetera. Uh, it can be shared completely throughout Wi-Fi, excuse me, through Wi-Fi. And it does, of course, support up to full K, uh, excuse me, 4K Full HD. As advanced camera with uh, 8M pixel CMOS sensor, it does have that typical wide angle lens that you're used to uh, with this type of grand stream video conferencing system and has 12X zoom and of course, pan tilt zoom as well. So pretty much what you would expect and what you're used to uh, with the 3200 series. Okay, and this is ideal for boardrooms, uh, large conference rooms, your auditoriums, uh, as well as classrooms. This is a great device uh, for any of that. Um, definitely is bringing a really refreshing um, and updated device. Uh, very needed as well. 
uh, to our video conferencing portfolio. All right, and the last device kind of that I wanted to take a look at and cover, uh, take a look into is the GMD-1208 wireless microphone, or as I like to call it, the puck. <laughs> but uh, this is a pretty great device um, here, uh, but this is basically a companion device uh, for our GVC-3220, uh, the multimedia conferencing system. But this, uh, you know, the GVC-3220 does have a built-in microphone, uh, but, you know, this device is pretty much, you know, the companion microphone that you would be looking to. There's actually a lot of pretty great technology built into this device focusing uh, on its actual performance, uh, such as eight omnidirectional microphones. Uh, but this allows it to have a five meter pickup range, which is a lot out of one of these devices. Uh, you know, if you're familiar with the sport, it's about the size of a hockey puck. This is, it's pretty tiny, probably a little bit, you know, thinner actually. Uh, but, you know, this device has a very large pickup range uh, and very crystal clear audio that it provides. And it is also completely wireless as well uh, with an included charging station. Uh, and it also has a propriety, uh, excuse me, proprietary 2.4G Bluetooth or dual mode uh, for air resistant transmission uh, just to try and focus on essentially, you know, if you have this device and you're deploying it wirelessly connected to the GVC 3220, you definitely want audio to be synced up uh, to your video. That's obviously a big deal for pretty much everyone, especially if you have any sort of important meetings, I'm sure you all know with your clients, video conferencing definitely can be a key uh, when landing sales or collaboration with clients and coworkers. But the GMT-1208 basically brings that mobility and flexibility to any conferencing solution. All right. Okay, well, thank you guys for coming up right about on that 30 minute mark. Uh, that I was talking about. Uh, so we have a few more minutes uh, to talk about these solutions uh, and for me to answer any type of questions uh, that you all may have. Just bring myself up here. Uh, so yeah, so we have a few more questions, excuse me, a few more minutes to answer any questions. So please feel free to use that Q&A uh, feature. And I believe uh, Abdel will, will probably help me out with some of the more technical ones. Uh, there are a lot of people in this webinar today and a lot of questions. So if your question did not get answered, um, you know, I will be responding to pretty much most of them in a, uh, in the follow-up email, and do a little Q and A section. So keep a lookout for that. Uh, and if your question didn't get answered in there, feel free to reach back out to me. Uh, and of course, if you're watching a recording of this, go ahead and leave a question in the comments section. Uh, a few people are asking it. So yeah, there, there will be a copy of this uh, presentation. Uh, the slides will be sent out along with a copy of the recording um, via email to everyone who attended via IP video talk today. All right. Ooh, these are popping in fast. Okay, so I'm going to go over real quick some of the questions that Abdel answered. Um, I think are probably pretty important here. Um, so let me bring this over to my main screen so I'm not just looking away from you guys. So it looks like I'm looking at you. All right, it was actually asked, does the USB dongle work with Grandstream phones in the USB port? Um, this should give the headset additional range. Um, so for Bluetooth, uh, you actually don't need the dongle because the phones already support Bluetooth, uh, except on certain models. So on the models where Bluetooth is not already innately supported, uh, you would need the dongle for that. Uh, releasing an app uh, for surveillance products. Um, you know, this isn't on the roadmap in the foreseeable future. Uh, it could be something that we're working on. Um, but just keep an eye out for that. But for right now, there's no such uh, thing on the way. Uh, any plans on releasing the app for surveillance? Oh, excuse me. Uh, the NVR, new version of G-Surf for cameras. Um, 
So there is only the software for G-Surf. Um, just once again, with the surveillance, you know, IP surveillance in 2021, we're kind of just taking our time easing into it a little bit. Uh, there may be an NBR in the future. It's something we kind of been looking for um, as a possibility. So just keep an eye out for that and, you know, be sure to, if something you're interested in, uh, reach out to us on the forums or, you know, through our contact us form uh, and just let us know. Your feedback does, does help and does, um, you know, push development one way or the other. So yeah, this this got mentioned a few times. I think it's important. Uh, the GVC model is built on Android 9, uh, so that does allow any conferencing app that is supported by Android 9 um, to be used for conferencing. So it's not just IP Video Talk or you know SIP. Um, you know, it can allow any app that works with Android 9 um, to be installed and supported. Uh, so you have the GMD-1208, the little puck. It actually can be supported uh, by any device uh, that supports Bluetooth. Uh, so it is possible to connect it to uh, pretty much any device uh, that supports a Bluetooth microphone uh, and be used for that purpose. So it, it isn't exclusively for the GBC-3220. Obviously, that that is kind of the ideal deployment we were thinking of uh, when we developed this device. Um, but, you know, we definitely wanted to make it as flexible as possible um, for conferencing deployments. So this, this, is, this comes up a few times, and I think it's important to cover it. Um, so why the paper labels on phones? Um, you know, so this is something that's it's pretty fiercely um, debated within Grand Stream, I would say. Um, so mainly with the you know the GRP twenty six thirty four that we touched on, um, let me actually bring it up real quick just just to give you guys a visual. Oops, wrong thing. All right, so okay, so yeah, so the paper uh, paper. So yeah, so looking at the uh, GRP 2634. Yes, this is paper. Um, you know, there is a way for, you know, just want to cover this first, um, to print these out very easily. It's actually embedded within the, uh, most likely <laughs> be embedded. I'm pretty sure this is how we do it with the other GRPs that have paper, but it is embedded in the um, graphical user interface of the device. So it's really easy to just download a template, you know, put it on a Word document as many times as you need it, print it out, and always have a bunch of paper options on this. Um, but why paper? Um, it's definitely a good question. Uh, it's two main reasons. The one main reason is price point. Um, you know, so we definitely want these devices to be mass deployable. Uh, and there's a certain gap that we're looking to sort of fill with these devices. Uh, putting on a second LCD screen, obviously that increases the price point of the device. Uh, along with the additional development that goes into it as well. Uh, we do have an LCD GRP 2600 series device. Uh, so, you know, that sort of device is available. Uh, but we did find with kind of speaking with, um, you know, some of our sort of focus groups, along with a little bit of beta testing, mainly too with our partners uh, and doing sort of research into various markets, competitors, et cetera. Um, for this kind of price point, this kind of device, uh, you know, the paper uh, additional BLF and speed dial keys uh, are the option for the price point that we're looking at. And that's pretty much honestly the, the main focus in that sense. Uh, and actually a lot of people still enjoy the paper. Uh, you know, sometimes it's just easier to set up, I guess. Uh, but, you know, I, I know it's it's a pretty fiercely debated topic within the uh, <laughs> within the IP communications community, uh, which, you know, is something I didn't too much expect, but yeah. Okay. Not to go on too much of a tangent there. All right, I'm going to answer one more question. I know there's a lot here, guys. So if you have any, please, please put it in the Q&A section. And when I send the follow-up email, uh, either later today or tomorrow, you're, I will be answering them there as well. Uh, 
Uh, so yeah, Philip, actually, I think this is also then a good question to answer as our very last one. Um, with all the new GRP phones available, how much longer will the GXPs be around? Um, I can't, I can't give like a specific time, um, but it's definitely worth saying, you know, we will continue to support the GXPs. Um, you know, they definitely, we, when we were designing the GRP phones, um, carrier grade, now these essential phones, now these new devices, um, we did it with the idea that we want them to be able to coexist for as long as possible with the GXP models and the GXP devices. So those, GXP models will still be getting firmware updates. They will still be getting, um, you know, bug fixes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You guys know what I'm saying, uh, et cetera, uh, for the foreseeable future. All right, so those devices will continue to be supported. We're not going to be just abruptly pulling the plug on them. Do not worry about that. Okay, guys, um, there's a lot here still to answer. I will be answering them in the follow-up email, uh, so just keep an eye out for that. Um, and if I don't answer your question in the follow-up email, just reach back out to me. Um, it'll be sending directly from my inbox. Uh, but, yeah, thank you all so much today. Really appreciate you all coming through uh, and learning about some of the more kind of exciting products and sort of new additions to our portfolio that's coming in 2021. Uh, everyone, please stay healthy. Uh, have a great rest of your week. Uh, happy holidays as well in advance. Uh, and please have a great new year if I don't see you before then. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.